Hi everyone, this is a video summary of Laboratory 8 for Physics 124. We're going to be studying resonances in pipes. The objective of this lab is just an observation. We'd like you to observe the frequencies of standing waves in a pipe and compare them to the theory. The theory of standing waves is covered in your textbook in section 14.8, which is assuming that you are studying out of physics by J.S. Walker, 5th edition. The main idea here is the idea when you hold a seashell to an ear, you can hear the ocean. That's not actually what you're hearing. What you're hearing is resonant modes of sound waves inside the seashell. And we're going to study a much simpler structure here. We're going to consider a pipe with two open ends. And the key observation is that for a pipe to have a wave propagate through it, there needs to be an antinode and both ends of the tube. Now, these are sound waves, which are compressional waves, and we think about sound waves as air particles moving back and forth here. An antinode is a point in the wave of maximum displacement, and this is uh, a pipe here showing a node, an antinode, and a node in a sound wave. And you'll notice that the positions labeled with the nodes, the particles aren't really moving but the particles in the antinode are really going strongly back and forth. So we're looking for cases where there's one of these antinodes in the sound at both ends of the pipe. We're going to represent that in the pipe as a sine wave, which is a graph of the amplitude of the uh, sound wave as a function of distance. And what that showed you there was the oscillation of the wave back and forth inside the pipe. This is a first harmonic, and this is a first wave that fulfills the conditions that you have an antinode at both ends. Here's a diagram that shows where the nodes and antinodes of pipes are for higher harmonics. We just saw the first harmonic, and then these are graphs for what you see for the second and third harmonics. Notice the increasing number of nodes and antinodes along their length. However, you will see that every pipe has an antinode at the top and at the bottom. If you work out the condition for standing waves to occur in the pipe, you'll find that the wavelength of the nth harmonic has to be equal to twice the length of the pipe divided by n, where n is the number of harmonic, 1, 2, 3, etc. Uh, if we convert our wavelength into a frequency using the velocity of a wave, you find that the frequency of the nth harmonic is equal to v over lambda, so it's the speed over the wavelength, or the nth harmonic times the speed over twice the length of the pipe. And the number of nodes on the pipe is just the number n. Since we're dealing with sound waves here, we can look at the frequency of the first harmonic, and we have an expression here that the speed of sound over 2L should give you the frequency of the first harmonic. The speed of sound in this case will take to be 343 meters per second, which is a typical speed of sound at 20 degrees C, which is a characteristic room temperature. L here is going to be the length of the tube. This isn't exactly accurate. Um, if the radius is much small, is not much smaller than the length, uh, this will be off by a bit since the node sits a little bit outside uh, the actual end of the pipe. Well, with that under our belt, let's learn a bit about how we're going to collect data. To collect data for this experiment, you're going to need a smartphone running the Firefox app and a cardboard tube. You can use a toilet paper tube. Paper towel tubes probably work best or a wrapping paper tube. And what you can do to collect data is start the data collecting in spectrum mode. We're going to collect the audio spectrum of sounds around us. And we're going to hold the cardboard tube up to the mic on your phone. You can find the mic on your phone, the microphone, by blowing gently across your phone and looking for where the amplitude of the sound gets really loud. Ah, so my microphone is going to be right here. So, to then proceed, we are going to want to collect data of a background noise with the tube in place and then without. This will work better if you find a source of white noise. For example, I can use a fan because that generates sound at a bunch of different frequencies. And then some make it through the tube and some uh, get blocked out in the tube. So we just turn on the fan collect data, 
place the tube in place, remove, and stop. To record a spectrum of sound, you should open the Firefox app on your phone. You will see a several different experiments, and the one we want to choose is Audio Spectrum. If we go to Audio Spectrum and select History, we can begin viewing the spectrum of the sound around us. This creates a movie. On the x-axis of the movie are the frequencies of all the sounds in, that the phone is hearing, and on the y-axis you see the time going by. All the sound that you see there is the pattern of my voice. If I stop talking, the sounds will disappear. It can be confusing to see all the tones that make up my high squeaky voice showing up across the spectrometer. Instead, we can look at a single note or set of tones that come from a musical instrument like a piano. This is a concert A. You will notice that the concert A is about is defined to be at about 440 hertz and if i click on the graph and pan and zoom in on that i can choose pick data and put a marker on the bright spot and see that indeed the sound is about 440 hertz i can also pan and zoom away and look at these other lines they are the harmonics of the data which are of the fundamental frequency. So there's one at 880 hertz, and the next one will be up at higher multiples, 440 times 3, 4, 5, etc. The spectrometer is a powerful tool because we can use it to detect the differences between other sounds. For example, I can look at that concert A again, and consider a higher note. You'll notice that the higher pitch note does not have the same set of frequencies. Now we want to spend some time exploring the frequencies around us. We've already seen the frequencies that make up my voice, but try experimenting with your voice, or perhaps whistling at different pitches like a high pitch at high frequency, or a lower pitch corresponding to lower frequency. <whistles> Try humming or singing or seeing what the sounds around you uh, have for their frequency components. Next, let's take a look at what we call white noise. Here's a clip of white noise that I searched up on YouTube. Notice the frequency structure of white noise. There's signal at every frequency, so sound waves are coming out at every possible frequency. This is what we mean by white noise and how we define it. Now we're going to use the fact that this noise has all these frequencies in it to try to push all the different waves through the cardboard tube. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the audio clip with the white noise and I'm going to hold the cardboard tube in front of the microphone of my phone. I'm going to let the sound go through the tube into the phone. You'll notice that only certain waves propagate. So let's play the sound without the cardboard tube. Now, interpose the tube between the microphone and the sound. You'll notice that only certain frequencies propagate through the tube. We are going to go ahead and measure the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic, by tapping on the graph and using the pan and zoom to zoom in on the first white stripe in the spectrogram. We can use the pick data button to select it and determine what the frequency of this sound is. I seem to be getting a lot of standing waves at about 520 hertz. 
I'm going to use that observed frequency of 520 hertz and compare it to the theory which predicts that that frequency should be at the speed of sound divided by twice the length of the cardboard tube, which I can just directly measure. Go ahead and calculate what your theoretical value is and compare it to this first harmonic that you see standing in the cardboard tube. That's it. Thanks for taking part in Physics 124 at home. In the immortal words on the jar of mayonnaise, keep cool, but don't freeze.